experience, better on a Mac, you know, because I, I'm a mainstream Windows user. There's no doubt about that. But uh -huh. I think with me broadcasting using Wirecast on, on, on the Mac, it actually uses less resources than what it would do on the Windows PC, which I find really strange. But um, I guess it's just Adobe Flash. It may just work better in some ways on the Mac than it does on a Windows PC. Because right now, I've, I've, got a, I've got a quad core AMD system sitting here, and I'm broadcasting now using Wirecast, and it's using about 30, 40% of all cores on my CPU usage, which isn't you know, exactly ideal. But whereas when I use it on the Mac, you just like, it utilizes like 20% of uh, the CPU usage and, and never really uses much RAM either. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of um and an R and whether I should, um, you know, get a get a get a 27 inch iMac or build myself a more powerful gaming PC. You know what I mean? So, well, just... I, I'll give you my thoughts on you know the reason possibly why. Um, you know, other people notice it as well. You know, it's it's kind of talked about in in the broadcasting, you know, internet shows. Yeah. Uh, w with Wirecast, because I think uh, Wirecast initially started uh, on a Mac Mac platform first, and yeah. then eventually it was crossed over to Windows. I don't think it's. Um, it more has to do with crossing over to a different platform. And I, I see this with programs that you know originally started on Windows and then it crossed over to a Mac and vice versa. Um, yeah. I think it has to do with uh, the simple fact um, it's going to a brand new platform and often it's all developed as in the original platform. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Like um, you know, the people that cross it over are probably Windows programmers. Um, yeah. that don't have knowledge of uh, enough knowledge of the Mac platform to realize uh, you know the, the, the things Mac how to better. yeah it'd probably be better if somebody was knowledgeable in both um, Windows yeah. and Mac so the transition over would be you know much better so I think it's going to take a while f uh, for Warcast on the Windows platform to mature more yeah. I, know, I, I know from pre previous versions of Wirecast. I think I, I had the old 2.6 version of Wirecast. I did notice a, a pretty big improvement on the CPU um, utilization of the software because whereas when I had the, the, the really old version of it, I, it was utilizing something like 80% of a, an Intel Core 2 quad processor. Um, whereas now it's only using minute compared to what it used to. So I think it's developed in some part, but still I think it needs a hell of a lot more work to, you know, become mainstream on a Windows PC. And but, uh, yeah, the Macs are brilliant. I love the Macs. I love, you know, ever since ever since my girlfriend bought me this for my my uh, my nineteenth uh, birthday, you know, I've loved it ever since. And you know, it's it's really good. I like the Mac, but. For the simple reasons I I game a lot, the reason why I wouldn't go to a twenty seven inch iMac is simply Gaming, purely yeah. because of that reason. So, um, what did you say you have again on your? Uh, you had like a, a, a what what kind I, of uh, what kind of computers do you have exactly? I know I think you got like a Mac and a PC or something. Yeah, I've got a. I built this PC for myself about a year ago. Um, it was just sort of like a mainstream, you know, get up and go type system. Um, it's got an AMD uh, Athlon X4 640 processor. Um, it's got six gigabytes of uh, GL RAM. Um, it's got it's got two hard drives, 500 gigabyte Western digital hard drive and a 320 gigabyte Western digital hard drive and um, a ATI Radeon 4770 graphics card. And um, yeah, it's just a, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic for what it does, you know, it plays all the latest games, you know, it's, it's fine for what it does for me. But I think I think in September I'm gonna majorly upgrade to a, a really 
more powerful system. You know, it's going to cost me, you know, quite a lot of money to to build this system. But um, at the moment, you know, I'm still happy with this system, even though it's a year old. I mean, usually I usually build like a system every six months. But you know, money's kind of hard nowadays, so you yeah. know, it's not an option anymore. <laughs> Yeah, usually I, I just kind of run mine, you know, till either, you know, what I want to do, I can't do with it due to hardware limitation, software, and, you know, usually I keep them as long as I can, but... Yeah. Um, hey, let me yeah, see if yeah, Bob's yeah. on here, or Brad. Uh, I'm, I'm back, trying... I'm... guys, what's up? Yeah, what's you up? snuck in, I didn't see you come in, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to uh, go and do something. Sorry about that, we got... He's Brad's, a ninja. Brad's got a new PC, did you hear? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm quite jealous now, so... <laughs> jealous of both of us. <laughs> so, getting to the stages where I'm thinking, i got to take this up a notch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do, you do uh, Bob, and I'm not sure why, but... Uh, but I'm, yeah. I'm kind of glued to three set, system setups that I, I have in mind. Um, is either a Dell PowerEdge server with two CPU sockets. Um, that's going to be a mean mother in terms of performance. Um, also, I'm tied between the new 27-inch iMac, the top of the range model, or um, the gaming PC I was just explaining to you. With... I reckon go with the gaming PC, I reckon, Steve, because you can still use... Um... <laughs> the gaming PC would be better because you can do still do more things with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm glued between them three things. You know, I, I'm arguing with myself whether I should get the, the gaming system or the server. You know, <laughs> yeah. just, just stick a big fat graphics card on the server and stick, you know, Windows 7 on it. Even though it's a server, it doesn't necessarily mean I can't utilize its full potential. You know, I can still get the performance of the two sockets. You know, I can still get the performance of the memory using a 64-bit version of Windows 7. So, you know, it's, I don't know, it's so, what happened. What do you just want to do, Bob? Do you actually work, so you just, do, you just, do you just actually want to just upgrade to a new computer? Well, that's the thing, Brad. Every time I build a new system, I just overkill it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just my nature. I don't know why, yeah. but. Well, you're a geek, that, that, that's, it. that's what you want to do. Yeah. You're a geek and you're doing that sort of stuff. I'm a geek that overkills stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's good, mate. Good on you. No, you should, you should, um, you should do something like that and get me, I don't know, whatever you think works for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You know, the, the the only reason why I want to say that is because my brother keeps encouraging me into um. Well, maybe you could ser maybe you could serve our website. Yeah, a lot of I mean. He, he keeps encouraging me to use VMware ESXi, which is a mainstream operating system, but you can run multiple operating systems inside ESX. Then. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's it's awesome stuff what he does, and I'm just really intrigued because, you know, obviously my nature of being a geek, you know, I just want to do it, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, I think having a third may, may come in any, you, you know, because you can do a lot of things with TechLess now, and... Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the that's the thing with with hosting things. You know, when you host your own website and when you host other websites and stuff, servers are built to be throttled within an inch of the life. So Definitely. really, if I was hosting a a, a a website, then that server will be getting constantly throttled. And if I'm trying to work while the server's getting throttled, then you know it's not ideal. If you get what I mean, so I'd rather have a separate system to be a server rather than a mainstream system. So you, uh, it just where? are you planning to run like the the server that has your whole website at your your home? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I will. I, I don't know um, if 100 meg broadband gets available in my area pretty soon, then I may think about it. But until now, you know, I'm stuck with a system which is fine for what it does, fine for what I do, but still, you know, my nature just keeps ruling over me and I just want to overkill stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if this is good, more is better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, the more monitors you have, the better. The, the more computers you have, the better, because you'd just be 
screwed in this technological world that you can't climb out of. Yeah, I know, Zany. I probably do need a website. It's just there's so much going on right now. Probably uh, not anytime soon. Yeah, well, tell you what, Steve. If I do end up getting the server and I find a way to utilize the usage of those resources inside that, maybe I'll be able to host you off. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll get served. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a uh, court notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. Uh, uh, you know, served in a good way. A server, <laughs> not served with court papers. Huh? But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, there's so many things that I want to experiment with. You know, there's, I remember back in 2007 when I was just about to leave for the military. Military, I um, I was you. My brother installed Linux Ubuntu on a really old system I had. And it was the only system I had when I was that age. And I had two like 15 inch monitors. That was when I like really started being a geek. And I, I, he installed Ubuntu. But the funny thing is, I was so glued to Windows that I didn't have a clue what Ubuntu was. I thought it was just this weird thing that was installed on my computer. So I started getting used to it, you know, doing all the sudo commands and you know working out how to install stuff I, I finally put the nail in the head when i actually got used to it when i came back from the military but i didn't have a windows xp disk so i couldn't go back to windows so in the end i just stuck with ubuntu but after a few years i started growing apart from ubuntu i started using windows again and um you know I really want to get back into it, but it's just not for me. You know, you know, whereas everything on Windows is readily available to you, you can go out and buy a software disk for like, uh, I don't know, CX5, Photoshop and stuff like that. And exactly the same for the Mac. But with Linux, I know it's not very supportive or noob friendly, should I say. Yeah. But then again, it's a very good system, and I think, I think, um, I think to drag more people into experimenting with it, I think you just need to educate the community more. I mean, there's there's not a lot of people out there who tech savvy like us. Uh oh, oh, that sounds like Brad. All right, Brad, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that had to be you, uh, Brad. <laughs> Brad, you're grounded. You're not going out for a week. <laughs> I know it's like uh, randomly, like uh, blurbs. Just you know, you hear like the the uh, the tech webcast pop up. The, <laughs> the intro. I'm like, what's going on, with Brad? <laughs> yeah, Brad. Why don't you just take over Steve's show while you're here? <laughs> <laughs> this show Sorry has been brought that. to you by uh, Tech I, Webcast. Okay. Yeah, some ice cream uh, <laughs> add or some shit. I don't know what it was. I'm over it. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was good. Sorry, dude. Go. Sorry, Bob. Go on, mate. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to. Yeah, we're just having no, some fun. Yeah. Okay. I just, I, just think, I just think, you know, if you educate the community more, you know, it it would be so much better because not a lot of people, as I was saying just then before that rude interruption. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of tech savvy people out there like us, and, and not a lot of intelligent, literate computer people. But in this digital age, it's important to educate the consumer because you know you walk into these big corporate companies such as like, for example, PC World over here or Best Buy in the US or another place in Australia. I haven't got a clue about Australia. It's just an alien land to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, honestly, they, they just fill your head with so much corporate jargon. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, for, for a new user to walk into a, a big store like that, overwhelmed by the amount of computers that are in front of them and they've got a, a non-literate guy standing in front of them saying, oh, this computer's so and so better because the price is higher. Well, it just doesn't work like that. You know, you could sit at home with, a, with a, like a 10-year-old system and make it as fast as, you know, 
as a new system would be, but by using Linux. So yeah, I think if you educated the customer about Linux and stuff like that, you know, you wouldn't have to go out and buy all these new computers all the time because you, you know, your old computer's getting slow, and you just gotta know how to tweak and adapt to 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 the system you already have. But I think I think Apple's big selling point nowadays is, um, you know. Every year they bring out a new product, you know. So, so, so you have to you you have to sit there and think about it for a second. Oh, I think I should get this new system because it's you know the yearly upgrade. Yeah. What, do you think that's the case at all? Uh, you talking about with Mac in general or? Yeah. Well, 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 everything Mac, like you know, because they upgrade everything in in yearly intervals or almost yearly intervals. Do you think you should upgrade every year without fail and spend uh, all that money on an Apple product? That's that's really dependent on the person. I mean, um, I, I think naturally, uh, I, I, I hear a lot of people say with Mac that they don't have the most recent up-to-date hardware in that and that they don't upgrade it enough. Um, but I think naturally you're going to see with any product or, or good product, Product. Uh, I'm not saying necessarily uh, Apple or Mac or anything. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not picking an Apple. Yeah, no, I'm just using it as an example. You know what I mean? It's just a um, yearly interval thing is 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 far too close together in my my mind. I think they should stretch it out to like something like eighteen month interval. Well, occasionally what? it does. In fact, uh, I think it was between. Uh, I think I don't know if it was 2008 or 2009 Mac Pro. I think it took them like you know it was extended beyond the uh, the 12 month range. I think it was like you yeah. know uh, a year and a half. Um, I don't think you know uh, well at least with Mac that yeah I already lost my train of thought. Um, that <laughs> <laughs> oh geez I hate this. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, like, like I said before, some people don't think they, they put the most recent stuff in it because it does lag behind, like, in, in PC department, like PC Windows, um, because they can, you know, put in the latest and greatest right then and there. Yeah. But, you but know... that's the thing, though, the, the, the really big thing that really wicked me off about Apple. Like I said, I'm not picking on Apple, but Apple are great products, great, you know, build quality and all that. I love Apple. I love my MacBook. They so daily, but when I when I actually got this MacBook, um, it had the three twenty no sorry the the nine I think it was the nine nine four hundred M Nvidia chipset in it. Yeah, ninety four hundred. Like a week later, they upgraded it to the three twenty M, and I was like, what? So I immediately got on the phone to Apple and said. Why did you do that to me? Why? <laughs> Can't I just give you this one back and you give me a new one? And they were like, nope. I think you Stick can... Stick with the, the one that you've got. And I was like, no. I think they give you like 12 days to return it or something like that. Well, you that's, probably missed that's it. That's the thing. I, it was like past 12 days. Uh... <laughs> I'd had the MacBook and I was, I was using it like every day for like something like a, a month. Next minute, they bring out this new version. I was like, no way. If, if I knew the new version was coming out, then I would have waited. But I think it's just, I, I don't know, that's, that's, that's what just really, you know, peed me off about something like that, you know. Well, I, I didn't know about Apple products until I got this Mac, MacBook. I did know about them. I wanted to use one, but... I wasn't really into them because, like I said before, I was a Windows user constantly. So, you know, Apple was sort of a new thing for me, apart from the iPhone 1, which I used with a, cl with a cracked screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had the iPhone 1 for like a year with a, cl with a cracked, cracked screen. screen. <laughs> and the poor old dear thing is probably still beating the tart out today. Uh, Bob, sold let's, it to a friend. Let's talk to you about let's let, let's talk to you about Tech Luster, Bob, and um, 
to people who don't know what Tech Luster is, explain to what, 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 what it contains. Well, me being the sort of like, um, yeah, sort of a crappy inventor type guy, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. But um, I just have this eureka moment where, you know, why can't I do a podcast? So me, Brad, and a few other guys sat down in the Skype talk and, you know, we got talking about this podcast and, you know, I came up with this great idea of uh, Tech Luster. Like, the, uh, the concept of it was, was, you know, obviously it, the name Tech Cluster, if you get what I mean. You know, it's, it's tech and it's a cluster of people providing you that tech. So me and, me and Brad are the core purpose of Tech Cluster, but also we have guests around us, which are the cluster of people. So, you know, I thought to myself, I love technology. I used to do a little podcast on JTV called Elite Demon Tech Help and all that stuff. I used to help people for free. And I used to love it. But um, I got talking to Brad and, you know, I'm a... Uh, sort of went off from there, you know, we started throwing money about, you know, like paying for the, uh, for the domain name, paying for the hosting and stuff like that, you know, and it was just brilliant. I loved it. You know, I was a bit nervous from the start. I remember Brad inviting me on the tech webcast for the first time. And uh, <laughs> he said, Hey Bob, do the intro. So I was like stuttering for like five minutes <laughs> trying to do the intro. I was like, No way, man, I'm nervous. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the nerves have gone now. I, I, still, I still do get nervous from time to time, but you no, know, hey, it's just life, isn't it? But you know, well, it's, it's just what it, it is, what it is. If you either like it or you don't like it. <laughs> Exactly, mate. Exactly. No, it's good. Good podcast, dude, and well done. And you've actually, you actually left. Um, you actually left at one time, and then you decided yeah. to come back. It's because, it's because the the reason why I left. Uh, I will tell you this little sob story. Well, I had um, my daughter was on her way, so uh, and it was it was having a really hard impact on my life. You know, because cause of the time frames me and Brad lived in, we, we lived in like a 12-hour difference. I mean, right now it's 2 a.m. in the morning, and it's probably like 10 a.m. for Brad. And I, it. I couldn't do it anymore. I wanted to spend time with my daughter and watch her grow up, and I just couldn't physically stay up for so long and, 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 and do the podcast. So I sort of left for a bit. But then I thought, why, why did I leave? Why did I leave that when, you know, I started it? So I said, hey, Brad, listen, I want to come back on. I miss the podcast. I love technology, and I don't want to leave what I started. So we we started again. I mean, you know, 2 a.m. from time to time or later, you know, isn't, isn't a problem. But, you know, from an everyday stance was just ridiculous. I couldn't do it. I, I, I just physically couldn't do it i was i was getting up in the morning feeling drained i felt like i was failing my family and stuff like that so you know but so, um you know we, we, we we're actually stuck on each day each week we, we're doing it one day a week now at, eight, at like 8 a.m my time which is cool and I'm, I'm happy with that and uh you know more things to come you know for the podcast well, I think yeah, you do get sure. you ha, you do get a tendency of getting burned out, and maybe that's why uh, Bob you know, kind of left for a while from uh, Tech Luster. Yeah, well, I was getting burnt out. I was like, you know, I was doing all this hard work when yet, you know, me and Brad were doing all this hard work when yet we weren't getting rewarded for it because you know when you do start out, you don't tend to get that many listeners. Well, but time goes on, you know, you start to get more and more. And now it's getting to a good stage where we're getting like every time we post something on Facebook about tech cluster, you know, we get like 30 visits at like in, in, in the space of a second, which, you know, it isn't bad for start now, but, you know, as we grow, I hope we grow into a larger thing where, you know, possibly we could have a few people, a few more people working with us. 
but you know it's just it's just the start and progress at the end of the day everyone's been there i'm sure you've been there too steve uh yeah i mean initially when i started out you know um i only had like i'd be like broadcasting for you know four hours and maybe get um a couple people come in the chat room and they leave <laughs> that was it so um you know it, it takes a while i mean you know you gotta slowly build it up and you know go from there yeah uh, well, it, yes it's it's brilliant the way it is now and i like it you know it's uh getting great progress i would think we're getting like every time we put up a podcast like a month later we get like seven thousand listeners and stuff like that you know foreign listeners oh so that's... And, the pod- and the podcast that mean that me and you do bob it's 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 really laid back and it's no no it's not not yeah not, well, that's what i mean that's what that's what tech luster was about you know you don't have to do it every single day of the week you don't no. have to do everything there and then in the short space of time you don't you know you don't have deadlines and um, it's just you know it's just it is what it is and you come on listen to the podcast get your tech fix and then wait till next week to get your your other tech fix <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly so um where do you, where where can all the different places do you have your tech related uh, you know st- or tech luster stuff like are you on iTunes i guess your website um facebook and all that yeah yeah we're everywhere we're everywhere um we're on twitter dig um JTV, YouTube, you know, I've got a few videos on YouTube. Um, there's actually only one video on YouTube that's got some pretty major hits. Well, I I, I say the pretty major hits, but it's only about 3,000 views or something like that. You know, but still, it's, it's a goal for me. You know, every time that increases is another goal, but still, you know. It's still growing. It's still only a young podcast, and and, and I hope it it gets better in the future. How long how long has it been around for Bob Techluster? It's been a bit like a year, hasn't it? Something like that. A year, maybe eight months, eight months, something like that. Oh, okay. I thought it was okay. It's, it hasn't been too long then. No, no, not at all. So it's 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 still it's still in development. You know what I mean? You know, we still got a professional website to be built. You know, nearer to the future if we start getting you know, like sponsors in and stuff like that, you know. But um no, it's not all about the money. It's it's purely because me and Brad love technology that we do it for free. You know, everyone's gonna start from a free fall, you know, at the start, but you know, maybe in the future we could have some major sponsors and do some really hardcore reviews on stuff, you know, on YouTube. I'm not trying to be like every other podcast out there. I'm not trying to be, you know, any anything else. I'm just being what I love being, and that's a tech enthusiast. And I, and I, I and I'd like to mix it up a bit. I'd like to mix with you, Steve. I'd like I'd love you to come on my show every week. Um, I'd love to get involved with every other tech podcast that's ever existed on the internet but you know it can't come all at once it, it's just going to be built up over time yeah yeah I, I i like you know conversing with other um either other broadcasters or other you know tech sites um and you know i've gotten to a you know a group of broadcasters and and bloggers and stuff which is great because you can uh, share ideas and you know uh, collaborate on different things which is great because that it kind of expands you out gives you new ideas yeah and, and it also gives you more knowledge as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, well, no matter what technology type it is, it's all technological. You know, it's, it doesn't really matter whether it's Linux or even a mechanical thing that's technologically advanced. You know, it's all good at the end of the day. It just depends what you're into. I, 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 I like... I like, you know, talking about new things like, you know, all this, you know, new technology that are getting put into cars, 
and stuff like that and bicycles, motorbikes, everything. I just love anything to do with you know, technology. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I think what do you think of the name? What do you think of the name of Tech Luster, Steve? What do you think of the name? Do you think it's a good name? Um, it, it's it's good. Well, I think he said originally, didn't he say it was Tech Cluster, or was it just? Well, it's it's well, it's not. You can pronounce it how you want to pronounce <laughs> it. That's the whole deal of it, you know. You know, because it's tech, and you look oh, for it. So I see, yeah. I see. Because if so you take the T E the... off, it says cluster, right? And so you kind of combine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so I see. Yeah. Sort of a smarty pants name. <laughs> but um, yeah. It's, yeah, I like actually, it. I kind of like it now that you explained it to me. I think, yeah, a uh, group of people. <laughs> well, how many now? I know it's you're the main person, Bob, for the tech cluster. But do you have like a group of people that come on, like um, maybe Brad or? Well, uh, Brad, Brad primarily is. Um, a co-founder just like me brad is ahead of the website as as well as me you know there is no first to second or second to first both of us me and brad are one and whoever surrounds us is number two or three or four or or whatever you know it's just if if you want to come on the podcast then you can come on you just send us an email and we will organize it in you know because I, I love guests to come on. I think it. I think it gets more witty, and it gets more fun. Yeah. You, know, you, you just you can just sit there for so many hours and talk about technology. It's just endless. Seriously, it's endless. I don't know. There's, there's been times, you know, we kind of got caught. You know, we pretty much knew unless there's some new news that comes out. Uh, yeah. You know, the previous day or something. Sometimes. Uh, you know, you get sidetracked, and you know, you, you talk about yeah. other things occasionally. <clears throat> occasionally. Well, that's the thing on Tech Luster. There's no show notes. There's nothing like that. There's no. Yeah, we don't even prepare for the show each all week. You, all me and Brad do <clears throat> is source news and make up yeah. a story of our own up. You know, yeah. it's all about creativity in that sector. You know, you gotta you gotta create your own story and not feed off other people's stories. But in the same time. You got to read other people's stories to know about it because it's just word of mouth at the end of the day. You know, you 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 can't sue somebody for you know talking about technology that 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 that, that isn't theirs. But at the same time, you know, it's just I don't know. You know, if you if you want to come on and talk about something that we don't know about, you know, you can do that because you know it's just fun to learn stuff. It's a, it's just a really good learning curve for everybody because, you know, the same time that we're talking here about technology, we're educating someone else new. So, what in JTV chat there could be a newbie in there that doesn't have a clue what we're talking about, but still, we're educating. So, the more we educate the community, the better technologically involved they get. So that's the reason why I'm here is because you know I like I like to uh, I like to uh, feed people the good stuff. Well, I think it's not just uh, educate, but debate between you know uh, the people that are actually together on the podcast. And well, of course, I know you don't have uh, viewers per se, uh, unless yeah. you're on doing it live from JTV. And you know, um, you know, I'm not saying. Uh, debate as far as you know one's for and one's against necessarily but you know yeah. there might uh be something that the other people don't know and then you guys can you know all talk about it and you know uh gain more yeah I'll gain more information that you wouldn't maybe get re you know, otherwise yeah what's well, that's the thing you see with technology you know everybody's got to disagree with something there's not always going to be a favor and everything yeah. But at the end of the day is, you know, sometimes a technology podcast, you know, it could really turn out into a cat fight. And that's what I don't like. <laughs> See, I, I like everything about technology. You know, I'm, I'm not for Windows. I'm not for Mac. I'm not for Linux. I love them all. You know, 
maybe I like AMD better than Intel, but that doesn't mean to say to me that I hate Intel because they, Intel are great. They've been around for years. I used to use Intel before I used AMD, but I just find AMD more convenient for me. You now it's just personal preference. I don't get offended when someone says to me Intel is better than AMD because that's just their own opinion. You know, I I I, <laughs> I wouldn't care less if you like Mac or better than Windows because at the end of the day we're still communicating together, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way, I, you know, just because I like one thing doesn't mean I hate the other. But, uh, you know, I do admit I do get in some of these, you know, PC versus Mac versus Linux or whatever. But it's not to say that um, I don't like the other technology. It's that that sometimes people bring things up that I think may, might be inaccurate or yeah. something they may not realize. And... But I'm not being a you know fanboy for what I like. It's just you know they say something. Well, well, don't you realize that you know this, this, and this? You know, so it's not yeah. le necessarily going for or against anything, but to make sure there's cor you know all the correct information is there. Yeah. yeah. Well, or, I, I've got a question for you, Steve, about, about this. Why is there a war against Windows and Mac? What's the point of, of the war? That, Brad, is the question of the matrix. <laughs> the never, <laughs> the never ending. But, you know, if you're going to use the computer, you use it for what you need it for, isn't it? You know, you know what I mean? Like, use it for what you need, need it for. Yeah, exactly. My, my um, There's no case of what is better to use. It's just a case of what you can afford, what you like, exactly. um, what you want to use at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, cause exactly. Remember when me and you used to have arguments about Android and Apple? At the end of the day, it's a phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. It's a phone. Yeah, I know. It's a phone. Yeah, I know exactly. It's, it's it's just a phone to me. It doesn't really mean much because yeah. it's phones and text people. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's just all about you using what you want to use and don't get into confrontation about it because it's just gonna end out in a bad way. Yeah, exactly. Saying that, Steve, you know, when some people are incorrect and then they disagree with you and then it starts turning into an argument, I think that's what gets people most about, you know, PC versus Mac and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, if someone's incorrect, you know, all you just got to do is, put, you know, correct them politely. You know, that's all. If they get offended, they get offended. At the end of the day is... You know, you're going to come on strong because you corrected it. So, you know, it's just a win or lose game at the end of the day. But, you know, correcting people isn't wrong. Well, or yeah, even, well, as far as I even. believe to be correct, I admit, you know, I, I'm careful. Usually I'm pretty careful on what I I say because I want to make sure it's absolutely correct as I, as I know it, you know, because I don't want to yeah. give any wrong information, so... Yeah, well, that's 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 a good thing that you don't want to give anybody the wrong impression or the wrong information, because the wrong information um, can give you a bad name for yourself. You know, so say if someone's watching the podcast right now and they they want you know they want educating by you or they they want your opinion on something and you give them the wrong information and they come back and say, well, you gave me the wrong information. I think so and so this, you know, Y and Z this and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it's just, you know, get on with it, do what you do and find it out for yourself. Don't ask somebody else. Find what you like, find what, what suits yeah. you best. Don't just sit there and ask for people's opinions on stuff because at the end of the day, it's just going to, end out in a confrontation or it's going to end out in, in tears. <laughs> Bloodshed. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Bob, if you don't, well, yeah, that's a good point too, Rob, but you need to ask, too, if you don't know anything, you need yeah, to ask. Well, yeah, yeah. In, in, some, in some measure, you know, you can ask someone's opinion, but then again, if you don't agree with it, walk away, but if you agree with it, stay. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's my yeah. saying of the day. That old anyway, time. Steve, um, have you heard about the Windows Media Player, AirPlay to Windows Media Player? That, that's come out just the other day. Someone's made a, a thing for it. If you've got an iPad or an, iPhone, or an oh, iPhone, you can actually um, send videos from the iPad or the iPhone to Windows Media 
uh, center using airplay, which is quite good. Good. I think that's been out for a while, hasn't it? Um, or no, it no, it just came it out. It? Someone made it. Yeah. Um, huh. There's a link on here. Um, there's a link. Where is it now? I've lost it. Where is it? Um, I think I just send you a link on Skype, Steve. Yeah, uh, if you it. want, you can put it in the chat room that or everybody, uh, everybody else can see it, and then uh, and then you know if they want to look it up too, and then. Uh, some things, yeah, I kind of have to do it here if I got to put it in Skype or something, but... Because I got, like, two different, uh, you know, separate systems running, so... Yeah. It's kind of hard hey, to do a paste. Hey, um, see, do you use Synergy at all? Um, I do. Um, uh, unfortunate. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, now, I, I admit I haven't used it on this computer, this laptop yet, and I, I probably should. Now I do yeah. use it. I've got this um, Mac Mini, and if I use it for the show, then yes, I have to use Synergy because uh, just where the other keyboard and mouse locate is very awkward to use. So yeah. I use Synergy for that, and I probably should use it for this laptop. Actually, that's a good um, reason. That's some of them right now. Right now, no, no, what how convenient Synergy is to me no, because my MacBooks stood literally on on a little stand you know because i like to be i like it to be like head height you know where i can actually see it and not down low and yeah. um, it's it's sort of convenient for me so i can you know use my, my desktop mouse rather than using the actual trackpad on on the macbook so you wouldn't use it so you wouldn't buy a um mac um a, a mouse for the um for your laptop no, because then again, it's using two separate mouses and it confuses you. Because Why you the mouse on the laptop? Um, I, it, I, do, up. Uh, I do. I do have. Card? Oh, go ahead. It's it's on a it's a, it's on a little stand. You see. Uh, so I if I lean over to use it, then it's a bit of an inconvenience because yeah, it's yeah. a PC mouse. So when yeah, you do synergy, it's it's perfect. I love it. Yeah. It, it there's literally. No delay in the mouse movement whatsoever. There's just wow. just perfectly perfect. And also, you can also hook up uh, another monitor to your, to, that, to your laptop too, Bob. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe getting another 1080p display. But yeah. Then again, you know, if I'm building my new system, then I want three monitors as iFinity technology with API. So, yeah. you know. what's that going to cost you? That must cost you a lot. Of, that's going to cost you a lot of money. Um, it's going to cost me around sixteen hundred pounds. Put that, put that in uh, USD or paying money. I'm just making an estimate. Here. It's probably going to cost yeah. about six yeah. grand. Holy shit! I, th I think in uh, American money, that's like half a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> our well, dollar, yeah, our two, dollar's two not grand, very good over here. I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm sure your eight core <laughs> Mac costs a lot more than two grand. Um, yeah, when I, uh, it's a 2009 model, I think I paid, um, 32, I think. I, I just got the, the base model Jeez. of the, the 8-core, you know, because, yeah. What know, would it be worth now, Steve, if you were to sell it? Um, you, well, grand. usually, the, the, <laughs> well, the resale value is usually pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you, actually, you may not be that far off, around 2,000, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Oh. You, you don't when you, you see Brad when you buy a Mac you don't really you lose value unless they're really old. Yeah, yeah. So you could I probably have, inside the Mac they're really clean and the metal is, it doesn't rust or yeah. Well, like it's that. aluminium. You know, the, aluminium, uh, I have the white MacBook, the white yeah. the body MacBook. I think it's I think it's the late two thousand model, two thousand and nine model. So just when it hit 2010, that's when they brought the new graphics chip out, which I was saying to Steve before. That's why I was so annoyed at Apple that they did that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. then again, you know, it's, it's fine yeah. for what it does. Uh, we better let Steve take over the show because... Um, the I, know, yeah, I feel like I've taken over your show, yeah. yet, Steve. We don't, want to, we don't want to take over your show, mate. So you've got any... Go ahead, mate. Oh, um, no. Well, actually, it, that kind of saves me from, well, it's kind of nice in a way if, you know, because I've had on guests before and because usually I try to make 
you know, the guests last for, you know, an hour if I'm lucky. And so I, yep. I try to write a bunch of questions down just in case we run out of stuff to talk about. Because usually it's the host yeah. um, um, thing to try to keep the talk going. But it's kind of nice that, you know, if the guest kind of takes over and then you don't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, running out of things yeah. to talk about. So I'm not really against it. So. Okay. All right. So what are your thoughts on the um, on that link I showed you, Steve, about the um, the airplay to the Windows Media Center? I haven't really looked at it very closely, so I'd have to really um, learn learn about it. I just learned bits and pieces, there, you know, because sometimes I have a lot of stuff in, uh, on the back burner that I'm working on, so I kind of miss that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I'm like, you know. Someone says to me, hey, check this out. I'm sort of like... Yeah, I'm looking after my child at the moment, so that it's gonna have to wait a week. <laughs> but still, you know, I try my best to check out stuff. But you know, it's one day a week, and that one day a week, I sit here and I just learn about everything in like ten minutes. So if there's a new technological thing that's just come out, you know, I'm on it like like anything. But um, it's a uh, it's it's hard having a separate life to technology. It really is. It's 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 hard, but you know, still you just gotta bear with it. Um, but yeah. So, uh, isn't there uh, something besides AirPlay that just came out uh, along those lines? And I can't remember. I'm kind of looking up now. Uh, it, What's that? I like don't do videos. What do you mean by that? What me personally don't record videos. What are you saying, dude? Oh. Brad, don't do video. What, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, I think you don't. You have like a Justin TV channel, and or he does some YouTube videos as well. But oh, he said Skype video. Oh, Skype video. What? What's how that, how that come up? Never seen do it. He well, he's uh, trying to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not really a fan of video, dude. Let's not bring that up. Anyway, um, yeah. So the airplane. He's trying works. to be incognito. He, you know, a low profile. <laughs> The re yeah, the reason why I haven't got my videos set up is because I'm actually streaming myself. Oh, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> on, are, you, are you on Justin TV or? Yeah, I'm on Justin yeah, TV, yeah. Yeah, he's Tech Luster, he is. It's, uh, it's justin.tv forward slash uh, Tech Luster. Spelled T-K-L-U-S. Yeah, it's sort of like, uh, so I call it simulcasting. Uh <laughs> Because <laughs> you're doing on here, and uh, you know, occasionally we do that. You know, we have several people broadcasting. We skyped in all together doing it. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. I, I like I like skyping in on video together, but but I don't think my webcam would uh, handle using two things at the same time. Cause yeah, that, that'd be a lot of bandwidth. In my face or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, in other news, Steve Hulu Plus is now on TV, mate. So if you, if you haven't got a TiVo, go and get the TiVo. Ah, oh, the TiVo? <laughs> Sponsor. A quick plug for them. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned something on TiVo. Um, I'm trying to... Uh... Yeah, who, they, 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 they just added, um, they just added, t um, uh, the Hulu Plus to it. It's, um, $8 yeah. dollars a month and you can watch much as many of TV shows as you want. Um, now I think you can get the the free version as well, but I think you can only watch the first five recent episodes, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 So if you know if you want to try it out first, or you know, because some people you know have Netflix, they want to keep that, or you know, or if they yeah. don't have anything, then I have a fan of my lava lamp. <laughs> Tech is rocking the lava lamp. <laughs> Thank you very much for the compliments on the lava lamp. It's been sitting in my like cupboard for like five months. I've actually got another one in there, but I don't want to set it up because electricity bills are very expensive in Britain at the moment. <laughs> trying to, I was trying to think of something. I just lost it. Uh, oh well. Holy <laughs> moly's. So yeah, so um. There's so yeah, much so, going on. There's, there's, lava lamps and. No, just kidding. What's going on, What are you smoking? <laughs> cigarettes. I don't know. I'm not sure what's in the cigarette, but I think it's the Red Bull. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, did so, you ever put um, your uh, lava lamp on a hot plate? 
<laughs> Does it explode? No, <laughs> no, I've actually been sitting there non-stop running for five days and it's still... It's pretty warm, but I'm scared in case it blows up and bursts a piece of glass in my eye or something, you know. <laughs> it's scary stuff, but I don't want to turn it off because it takes a while to warm up off the light. So uh, it's 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 wax. It's not actually lava. Or, or obviously it's not going to be lava because it just melt the desk. But um, yeah, it's wax. It's it's a really weird lava lamp. Never come across one like this before. So um so Steve, what's coming up on what's coming up on your shows in next week or weekend, mate? Any good um, guests coming up? Now, I don't have anything planned. It's because I'm going through this GTEC thing, trying to get that to work. Um, so, uh, but I do uh, on Saturday. I don't. It's probably gonna be open chat, but I am gonna wear my my dress white uniform. I think that's the biggest thing I got going on on Saturday. Stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, Steve, do you want to come on um, Tech Cluster sometime next yeah. week? Um, let me see. Next if week. Possible. Um, well, when do you normally do it? What, what a certain time or day? Um, before your show, mate. It's before your show, probably about ten, probably about eight, eight a.m. my time, and that would probably be about probably about probably about six p.m. your time, maybe. What time is it there at the moment, Steve? Oh, well, about eight thirty p.m. Central. Um. So yeah, it'll be like three oh. and a half hours from now. Oh, three and a half. I, I doubt if I'll be able to make it today, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like three and a half, I'm like, oh my gosh. Not today, <laughs> next week. Uh, po uh, possibly. Um, what, what day? Uh, uh, probably, I think you're a day ahead, uh, too. This time yeah. next week. <laughs> it'll be Wednesday for you, Steve. Oh, I guess, okay, it'll be the same. It'll be Wednesday, I guess. Uh, yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, I might be able to make it. Let me see. Uh, Probably at 6 p.m. your time, man. Hey, can you uh, send me an email, Tech Luster, and just to... Go do. Yeah. Um, just in case. So I've been known to forget guy things. What's talking about? He's, like, he's really wanting a multi-box setup of like all three of us on camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Once this might... <laughs> I tell you what, I got two internet connections. One I can't broadcast with. The other one I can, but I uh, during certain times it uh, I get really sucky internet. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the bandwidth to probably Skype in and and do multi picture yet. So um, it's I one of those can't win for losing situations. Um, so even I'll even though they don't have their video up, you know, I don't know if I could really do that or not. I'll but tell you I what I could do. I could probably do it on, over my stream, but I'd have to stop broadcasting for a second. That's not a problem. No, that's not that's not a big deal. I mean, we don't... Oh, my God. What is playing? I hate these adverts. Things just hate adverts on, on, on streaming websites. They just annoy you. I hate it. I agree. I agree. <laughs> oh, what's I that? I agree, man. Brad and Bob? I agree. I Ads on streams and this stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I guess it's a necessary evil to be able to broadcast or... But yeah, as long as they don't overdo it or constantly, you know, in the way. Uh, there, there's a few times people, broadcasters were... Because uh, it, like, hide half their, you know, half their video while they were broadcasting and, and, and things like that. Yeah, I think, I think uh, sometimes, you know, on JTV... I think uh, the actual broadcasters get paid for the for the um, advertisements, which is quite bizarre. So um, yeah, JTV tried to do like a partnership with like the most viewed channels. Oh, do they have partnership sort of type like, of thing? Uh, sort of like YouTube. Uh, I didn't realize. So some of the adverts are like made to make money for the actual broadcaster. And I um, also, Bob, um, not, not next week, but the week after, after season, Cody P. Christian wants to be on Tech Luster. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> must be what, 
He must be watching the stream because he, now he wants to be on. <laughs> Bob's to go to the with Tack Foster. Yeah. Oh, Steve, mate? if you can't come on, I will be very, very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Bob. He's going to jump off his table. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump off my table. <laughs> jump out the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so jump yeah, just just crumple everything up that you've got organised in your in your diary, and throw it in the trash can, and just concentrate on tech cluster. <laughs> <laughs> well, Honestly. um, I've been well, uh, I've been on like tech cluster, wasn't it twice? Maybe once or twice. No, it was tech, tech cluster. Oh, was it? Uh, I thought you did a special broadcast for tech cluster, didn't we? No, no, Bob said no to that, so I just oh, okay. I couldn't do it. Oh, I couldn't remember. No, okay. no, no, no. The only reason why I said no is because I'm not involved. <laughs> it was being a bit sly. Yeah, I, that one. No, I wasn't being sly. I was just saying because you were, it was a time and you, you would have been asleep and stuff and, and that yeah, kind of thing. And, you know, I, I like to keep everything in, in the one place. You know, that's, that's yeah. kind of what I like. You know, it, you know, even if I can only attend half of the podcast, you know, as long as I'm involved and I don't care. It's just not. Um, it's just. It's not me being big-headed. It's just. <laughs> I just hey, should I be... should I ring the bell? Ding ding. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. So, so yeah. So what are your thoughts on about the new iPhone five? So let's keep talking about technology. This is the technology. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Um, iPhone five. You gonna upgrade to the new one or what? Probably not. I mean, I've already got my my iPhone's pretty new, and so. Uh, it does kind of look interesting because it's going to use the, I think, a, a dual core. Uh, supposedly, it's going to be a wider screen. Now, I don't know. Uh, supposedly, they're going to use some metal backing and it's going to be thinner. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be thinner down the bottom of it as well. It's going to be like a, yeah, which I don't really like. I'm not really a fan of that. But um, apparently, they're going to announce this at the next um, DC, what do we call it, the next Big Apple event in June. Um, I think it's, June or I think it's next month, it's isn't it? Yeah, next month. Um, um, so yeah, so I can't wait for that. So yeah, yeah, I know. I realize those are all kind of rumors. Yeah, I should probably. Yeah, well, I just read. A, I just read a, a, a post, um, Carlos saying it's going to be announced next month, mate. At the DC Apple event. Yeah, and there's you know uh, other things coming up that I'm uh, kind of wanting to see because uh, I, I want to get the Final Cut Pro X coming out, and supposedly going to announce it at that show. Um, now. I may not get Lion, and supposedly that might be uh, announced as well. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I think I think I touched on that uh, Final Cut Pro um, on a, an episode of Tech Cluster a while back. Uh -huh. Isn't that meant to be like having integrations off the uh, iOS device, um, sort of editing software? Oh, you're talking about uh, supposedly it's going to use the interface like iMovie uh, yeah, for the yeah. the the back. You know the interface, I guess, so to say. Yeah. I think it's I think so, it's too early because they only did uh, they sort they sort of had a keynote uh at some um it was like some user group I think it was like a Final Cut Pro user group they did an overview of some of the stuff it can do and in a few specs but that was it so I don't know if we're gonna know enough yet on all the things it can do because there there are some people wonder uh wondering if it's kind of like dumbing down the interface and you know if it's going to be iMovie Pro and all that but you know from what I sing it's not going to be but it's it's a little, you know too early to tell on that at least as far as that goes do you do you specifically remember when when the iPod rumors when the very first iPod rumor came out that they were going to stick a leopard on on the iPod do you know what if if that was the case I probably would have got an iPod if they stuck leopard on it, but um, ever since that rumor it was flawed, I was like, oh, no! technically, the iPad is a mini, well, not really, it's not a mini computer, but it has the same sort of functionality as, an, as what's on the Apple laptops and stuff. Dude, they can't even play Flash. <laughs> well, can you play Flash on the on, on your Apple laptop? Yeah. You yeah, can. That's weird. Why do they do that? You know. Because they, they think it uses 
loads and resources to to uh, play, which it does in all fairness, but at the same time, Flash is a um, Flash is is a very important content to have on the internet. Because when you are using, when you are browsing the internet, unless you have Flash disabled, you know, you pretty much can't watch anything. You know, um, mm. what's the what's the new platform? Um, HTML5 is relatively new. You know, not many yeah. people are using it. But still, you know, it's a right to have Flash, and that's just the only thing that niggles at, at Apple for me. That's the only thing. But, um, you know, oh well, just get over it. But at the same time, you know, the, the thing that really, that I loved about Android when I had my Samsung Galaxy S, I loved it. I loved that I could just go on the internet and not worry about not displaying flash content when it just did if it didn't do fall asleep but it did it in a <laughs> respectable manner if you get what I mean it's just you know it was there at least it was making an effort to be there but at the same time you know it's just no it's not there now but is that why you got the is that why you got the gay blackberry because oh, it's a version <laughs> No, the reason why I got the BlackBerry is because I wanted to just run away from the from from all the you know things about the Samsung. You know, what you? That was a good phone, mate. Yeah, it was a good phone. I admit, I loved my <laughs> Samsung Galaxy S, but at the same time, like I said to you before, <laughs> what? I just wanted a phone that could ring people and text people. I yeah, no, but I'm saying that you can you can still do good good things with that phone, mate. You can yeah, do, I could still do good things with that, that phone. phone, mate. That BlackBerry is shit. Get rid of it. Check it out the window. And smash it. Ding ding. Round two. No, just kidding again. Well, <laughs> at the end of the day, Brad, before the iPhone and Android even existed, BlackBerry was probably the most popular smartphone back in the day. I'm not a fan. I'm not yeah. a fan of BlackBerry at all because they they just make this bloody tab looks. Well, cool. you're starting to make an argument out of this, so I think you should just go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm just saying though, that seven inch is just shit, Brad. <laughs> Brad, Brad, it's a phone. It phones <laughs> people. Phone. <laughs> no, Brad, phone. shut up. Shut up. You can do more things with your iPhone 4 than that, than that phone. No, you, I'm just saying. no, you can't. I can still okay, browse the web. Let's, let's say it this way. What, um, what don't you like about the, the BlackBerry personally, uh, Brad? That, you know, I'm just, I'm just uh, saying. Well, well not really. I, I like it, but I'm just not a fan of it. It just doesn't look right to me. Apparently... I've had people where it's really slow and laggy and stuff and that sort of stuff, but, you know, me personally, I wouldn't buy one. But I don't know, Bob may get one, but I don't know, it's up to him. Dude, the phone's fast enough for me. I've had a few little niggly lags before, but at the same time, you cannot say that the iPhone is perfect because it's not. Well, no I phone to... is perfect. But at the end of the day, Brad, it's a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I, I I would have stuck with the Samsung phone personally, but I wouldn't have got. Oh, yeah, well, that's that's your opinion. Shut up, now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, let me go ahead and put my my thoughts on the iPhone sure. four because I I have it. And I've been using it for quite a while. There there yep. are times when I when I was using it, and I'd say fairly often that I I do something, it would kind of just lag, but not for very long. It would just kind of and then you know do it real quickly, but which yeah, I yep. thought was kind of weird. But uh, I even tried you know. Um, shutting it completely down and, and back all the way up and it's it doesn't really inhibit what it does it's just uh some things i noticed it was kind of a little quirky thing every once in a while so you yeah, know i want well, to be you know the only difference the only difference relatively to the iphone and the blackberry is that you know some blackberries have got such screens some blackberries have got the trackpad and the traditional blackberry quirky keyboard and the iPhone's a touch screen. The iPhone has a little tiny bit more performance than the Blackberry. The Blackberry is just a phone to me and it browses the internet 
you can go on Facebook, it has an app store, it has apps, you know, you can do email on it, you know, it's 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 just I don't know, it's not the central of my life a phone. A phone is just I don't even use my phone, so what's the point in having all the power on your phone if you don't utilize it? That's the thing that I don't like. You know, if you if you have something then you can't utilize it. I'm a bit of a hypocrite here saying this, but if you <laughs> if if you have something that's the powerfulest thing in the world and you can't find a way to utilize that power, then it's just worthless. You might as well just downgrade to something that you you know, you actually can use the power of. But it is nice to have something powerful, but at the same time, you know, you think to yourself, why do I bother? Why can't I just downgrade to something that just does the job? But you know well, can't I... sorry, sorry, but sorry, but go ahead, sorry. But like you said before, you know, the um you know, the computer that I that I said earlier on that I was gonna build, yeah, it's an overkill. But I I am telling you right this second, I will find a way to utilize that power. Yeah, I'm sure it you kills would. me. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, but, okay. but Steve, just before Steve, you're saying your phone was lagging, mate. What were you actually doing in the with the phone? What sort of apps were you using or um, were you using the internet or um actually uh, a lot of in in some cases I just turn it on and you know how you flip the little lock switch, you slide yeah. it over and then sometimes it'll just kind of it do it just like I mean it's not even a second it's like you know like a quarter of a second just kind of lag a little bit before it switch screens or sometimes while I'm you know it, I'm not a lot of times I'm not even running apps per se it's just yeah. um, which is kind of weird yeah. I, I don't know why it's might be because of the the prior firmware update who knows. Yeah, have you updated the to, to the to newest firmware, mate? Um, I, I actually I haven't done it yet. Um, but uh, I plan to. But I think the the recent update was just for the location problem. Uh, you know how they store um, your location data locally on on the iPhone. That's why I didn't upgrade right away. But there is a, yeah, I'll tell you what, right? So I've had a few problems with the iOS as well. Um, you know I have an iPod. It doesn't have the phone function, does it? It's just an iPod with the iOS on it. You know, it's got cameras and stuff like that. But even then, when I've actually bought apps off the App Store, when I go to open the app, it crashes. And that's, you know, a few thing, a few times that's actually happened to me. And the fact that when I'm using the uh, iPod for gaming, like on Nazi Zombies, the iPod gets so hot. Burns your fingers. Honestly, I kid you not. When when I'm like about 15 minutes into gameplay on the on the iPod, it actually burns my hand because it gets so hot. You know, this uh, the which version do you have? In everything, it doesn't matter how perfect it is in your mind. There is going to be flaws with it. Every device or every computer or every Everything technological cannot be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect thing. Everything's got a flaw to it, but it's just identifying that flaw. But yeah. at the same time, I, I, like I said, I, the I, iPhone 4 is a great phone. I would have one if someone gave it to me. I'd buy one if I had the money, but at the end of the day, my BlackBerry is cheap. It does what it's supposed to do, and it does it well. So... No, so I'm the Samsung phone that. you had, uh, Bob, Bob, I've got a question for you. The, the phone you had, did you buy that outright, that Samsung phone outright? No, I had it out on contract. Oh, okay, right. So are you still on contract now? No, I finished it. Oh, okay. So why, you should just keep using that phone. It's a good phone. I've sold <laughs> it, dude. I'm not gonna go to the I'm not gonna go to the guy, well, my little brother that I sold it to and say, yeah, we'll have that back. <laughs> well, okay, the so next phone you're going to get is probably an iPhone, eh? Is it? No, I'm just going to stick to my BlackBerry. Okay. Uh, All right, it's up to you, mate. It's up to you. Because, no, like I said, I don't use my phone. I don't. I I barely use it. So, what do you do to check emails when you when you're out and about and stuff? Yeah, it, the odd occasional email flies in. I'll read it and then delete it. And then when I come home, I save everything technological for this space that I've got here. Because this is yeah. a very technical space, you know, I can do whatever the hell I want. That's why I got a three bedroom house. So I can, you know, have my own space. My daughter can have her own space. 
and obviously I can have my own space in the bedroom. Mm. And, you know, it works all fine. I just like to have it prioritised in that order for everything technical. If I want to come home and station myself somewhere where I, you know, I feel comfortable, then I'll do it. But if I'm, if I'm out and about using my phone, I don't feel comfortable because it, it's just not good enough for what I want to do. Uh, how about you, Brad? I think you have an iPhone 4. How, I mean, how do you use it daily uh, besides maybe just the phone itself? I mean, like the apps? Well, or... the web... well yeah, that's a good question, Steve. I actually use my iPhone all the time. When I'm out and about, I check email and stuff and browse the internet and that's a link, check Twitter and record a few, maybe a video I want to record or something, take photos. And, you know, the iPhone 4 takes great photos. And um, Yeah, it's got a good yeah. uh, camera. It does in it. indeed. You know, um, you know, you know, just I don't know, it's just a great phone. I love it, and then people rave that, and they say it's great. Everyone I know has an iPhone four, and I also see people that I walk past have iPhones four. So you know, it's a great people buy them. Well, here, well, originally I started out with, uh, well, it's it's an iPod, but you know, people call it iPod Touch, just the the the, the version kind of. And surprisingly, I didn't use it that much because you know I've got my music here on the computer. And when I get in my car, yep. I use the radio, so I ended up giving exactly. that exactly. to my my son. And now my iPhone, that's a different story. Um, surprisingly, you know, you know, of course I use the phone, but I find myself using the apps a lot more because, you know, because a lot of these companies, banks, uh, my bank has an iApp, and, you know, so I, I can check, you know, all this, you know, uh, check my email um, and stuff like that. So I'm finding it far more useful than I thought I would because this I'm is good information, this, Steve, because yeah. when I steal your phone, I'll have your bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I don't, I don't put the, yeah, see what I do. Yeah, you got to be worried about security because um, none of my passwords are saved on the phone. And, yeah. you know, nobody should, you know, save it where you just push the button and it automatically logs in, obviously. Because if it gets stolen, then anybody can go in your bank and, you know, whatever, transfer funds or... Oh, yeah, did you see that guy in the chat room that just said Windows, Mac, and Linux? You see, that's what, that, that's what I envisioned, like, many years back. Imagine if Windows, Mac, and Linux got all together and just made this one kick-ass device. But at the same time, it's just... It's just a... Winland Mac. Active, you've got to make something competitive in yeah, order to we'll call it money. Winland Mac it's like all three operating system device all in one yeah that, that, that would be so awesome then it would just end the, all the wars <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that They, yeah, well just look just look at all these lawsuits between you know Apple and this and this and another yeah, company exactly. and it's all about the money. That's all the com that's all the companies want is the money. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah, it's like Facebook. You know, they sell your information. You know, more information is better for them because the more money, you know, more information is better. Brad. Well, s sometimes they do have legitimate claims. I, I think sometimes, but. I say for the majority well, of the is, time. This is one of the claims that have really annoyed me about Apple. You know, when the very first Apple iPhone came out, you know, everybody thought it was so revolutionary. But in that respect, you know, the, the fine the touch screen was flawless. It was perfect. It was amazing for its generation. But there was touch screen phones before that. And let me touch on a little something that, that, that's really sensitive to me. Because Apple actually sued Samsung over the same icon layout. When I actually remember having a Samsung phone that had that icon layout before the iPhone ever existed. So I don't know why Apple would sue, uh, sue Samsung over Because they make the same phone as the iPhone, that's why. No, Brad, that's the thing you're getting. That's the that's the wrong thing that you're getting. Samsung have actually made touchscreen phones before iPhone even came out and had well, the same icon layout before the iPhone came out. Well, no, no, hang on, dude. No, no. I, I, Apple was the first person with the iPhone 4, mate. iPhone 1. No, came out. no, yeah. no. You're not getting me. You know the icon <laughs> layout on your phone? Yes. You know them little square icons? 
Yeah, like those square icons were on a Samsung phone years back before before um, iPhone even existed, and Sam and Apple sued Samsung um, because they had the same layout, even though it existed on Samsung before it did with the iPhone. So that's that's a little thing that really annoyed me about about yeah. that. You know, oh, I'm, I'm do, not uh... saying anything against Apple or anything, but. There was just a little niggly thing there that really wicked me off about that because it was just wrong. And the iPhone 1 wasn't revolutionary because it didn't even have video calls. I remember having a, a phone way back that had a front-facing camera that could video call even before the iPhone 4 existed or any other iPhone. Yeah, that is correct. That is true. I mean, you know, but, 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 no, but there's all. other. Exactly. Well, right. let me give you the the um, my example of uh, where the iPhone is different because originally I, I did have a smartphone. It was uh, the T-Mobile Wing, which had um, Microsoft Mobile on it, and yeah. yeah, it did a lot of things. It was um, you know it had menus and stuff, but it was actually hard to use. So. A lot of those functions I didn't use because it was just kind of clunky. Uh, where the iPhone, you know, pretty much you just touch the, you know, the little icon and it brings it up, and all your little menus are right within there. And it, you yeah, know, I, I give it, I give it that the simplicity of it is. Yeah, know, the way they integrated it with but, the hardware was, you know, compared to you know Windows Mobile Seven, which I guess ended up not being very popular. I'm not sure, but. It wasn't for me anyway, um, so... Yeah, well, there you go, because, like, before the iPhone came out, BlackBerry was the primary uh, business mobile phone, the business smart phone, you know. BlackBerry was the primary smartphone for a corporate company in order to contact their employees. So, you know, it wasn't just about Apple back then, because I remember phones way back then that were so awesome, you know, and and yet Apple just popped up out of nowhere, made this device, and and said to everyone, "Come and buy this phone because it's so amazing." But I remember having a phone, a Samsung. No, it wasn't Samsung. It was a Sony Ericsson that had a uh, five megapixel cyber shot camera on it. Now the iPhone came out like three years later with a two megapixel camera. So, you know, there, there was there was better phones then, you know, before the iPhone. But because of the touchscreen interface, the the way they designed the, the, the touchscreen and engineered the touchscreen, you know, it was you know, fair enough, it was just amazing, the touch screen, it was amazing. Yeah, I think that, that was the biggest thing for the iPhone, that, yeah. The touch screen. You know, the point, that, that, that was the only seller point for me with the Apple yeah. iPhone, was just the touch screen, nothing else on the phone. Yeah, how about like, you, but, hey, hold on, uh, uh, there. what about 20, you, Brad? Uh, in 2011, mate, and uh, the iPhone 4 will, will take off. We're, we're, we're not back in 1989 or where it is, we're in 2011. You know, there's no point talking about old technology. No, 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 I know, but that's where you're wrong, Brad, because Android's actually that's taken that's over the market in the UK at the present that's time. Bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> well, actually, so, I've, uh, I've talked about I this before. Debate. But, um... I'm um, debating about this stuff. <laughs> you okay, let me, let me get, throw, my, throw, throw my thoughts real quick uh, about Android. Um, it is true there, the... Uh, they are ahead of the, well, of course, market share for... Um, cell phones, but you know what I, I tell everybody. I mean, yes, they have more market share, but um, you can't really compare an operating system to the iPhone. You got to compare i or you got to compare the iPhone to another cell phone, like one yep. Android phone. You can't really, you know, if you want to compare Android to something, you got to do it to iOS or whatever. So if you look at um, Yes, Android has more market share than anything else, but um, if you compare it with, let's say, uh, one Android phone like um, Nexus One, uh, iPhone is still outselling the Nexus One or any other single Android phone. So you got to look, you know, market share is okay, but 
market share doesn't always mean they're going to make more money just because you have more market yeah, share. Or something. Yeah, but like, still, I'm not disrespecting the iPhone again. I'm not getting into yeah. a debate about iPhone versus Android and iPhone versus BlackBerry. The reason why I brought up this is because, you know, it's just a bit of witty banter. I'm not having a go at Apple. Apple is a fantastic company. Yeah. It has achieved so much in these years to come. You know, it's just, you know, it's a phenomenal company. It's a flawless company. But still, you know, without these talks, without these debates, you know, this simply wouldn't be a way for a user to pick which one. Because, you know... Well, yeah, exactly, exactly right. The, the, the bottom line is it comes down to what, what, what yeah. you want to do on the phone. So if you want an Android phone, you go get an Android phone. If you want a Windows Phone 7, you go get one of those things. If you want an <laughs> Apple iPhone 4, you get one. But at the end of the day... It's, it's your phone, phone. <laughs> your money. You do what you want. Right. Mean, you do what you want. I don't exactly. care. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's a good point, mate. And I think Android is a, uh, great, you know, because you can use it in a lot of different devices, embedded devices, mobile, cell phones, um, tablets. Um, but, you know, I think... Because I know we, we still have a few problems with Android because I know it's still kind of new um, with yeah. fragmentation. That's being addressed um, So, and, and a few other issues. But I think once those get worked out, um, you know, it could have but a potential then, you know, to... Even even when you say that, that, that Android is still, in, you know, not mature. People are starting to say now that iOS Symbian is getting old. So where do, you, where do you run to after that? Where do you go after that? I mean, you know, you've got this consumer, all these consumers sitting there saying, oh, Symbian's old, I want a new iOS. Let's just make one. You know, I don't get it. Why, why do people do that? You know, it's, it's fine the way it is. Just use it. <laughs> just, yeah. just seriously, it sends me insane. You know, what? How is Symbian getting old? It's developing all the time. Oh, you said Symbian? Yeah, Symbian. Oh, yeah, Symbian, is, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit familiar with it, yes. Yeah, Symbian, you know, is the, is the main platform for the iOS. So, you know, how is it getting old? No operating system gets old because they always develop it into something new. You know, every single, well, not every single, you know, update for the... Oh. Uh, for the iOS comes out, just some of the major changes, but at least it changes in some sort of manner or fixes something. You know, it's just, I don't know, I don't know how people can sit there and say Symbian's getting old or Android's immature. There's flaws in everything, just get over it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Nicole, yeah. Great too, mate. Just um, just bear with what you've got and just wait until the future. That's all you can do. Just look, look forward to the future, and I'm telling you now, it will change. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure it's always going to change, you know, depending on, the, you know, uh, new phones come out, uh, changes, so obviously the operating system might change around that too, so. What's that, Hellraiser? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <man>. God. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not manic. We just have a chat, mate. No, 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 no need to say that, mate. That's not really good to call. Yeah. Me. Well, see, Carlo, he's the one that likes to drink the wine during the broadcast. So. <laughs> yeah, do, do, you know, do you know what them three things that you've just said? Nothing to do with those. It's just tech banter. So if you, yeah. if you think it's one of those three things, you need to go into a corner and argue with yourself. Um, it's just clean, fun, having a chat about technology, which I love, and it's really cool. Yeah, good. we're we're it. keeping we're keeping kind of behaved, pretty much still. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. We're, we're well behaved. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, I'm gonna definitely. have to put you guys in the corner. The bell's already rung. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, how about this? Yeah. Now we're talking about cell phones, uh, OSs. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Palm. Well, I know the Nokia's. Oh, oh yes, Palm. Now that looks like a sexy operating system. Well, yeah, <laughs> they didn't like one buy it out, and uh, I'm not sure how they're going to develop develop that. I just haven't heard of it since it's been sold. Um, 
And I can't even remember who bought it now, but... Well, right now it's going to be iOS and Android. I mean, those are probably the, the two primary phones or operating systems or... No, well, actually, how about BlackBerry? I think BlackBerry still has the, uh, the market share right now as far as uh, all phones. I'm not even sure what BlackBerry runs on, really. So, yeah, the, the BlackBerry. The BlackBerry is just the same thing. It's, it's always been running on the same, you know, research in motion software. I don't know what the hell it is, to be quite <laughs> honest with you, but, you know, if, like it's I said before, job, okay. you know, just does the job well for me, you know, well enough to get by. I mean, you no, know, it's it's not perfect. It's not crap. Well, I know, I know the, the black... The black bears are still popular. Uh, you know, I, I hear they're, they're used. They're um, still f kind of favored with um, business users, e even though the o iPhone's gaining ground uh, on the business side. Um, yeah. Um, now, yeah, well, I still, you know, that's where businesses are always changing, you know. That, that, that's, that's where businesses come into it. You know, every business is always on the move to change. You know, you can't just stick with one thing solid. It's just never going to work. Because, you know, say like, say like I'm a, I'm a tech, technology analyst for a, for a company, for example, and I need to buy a shed load of computers for this office building. And I, I need to budget it carefully and, you know, need to do it right now. You know, that's why companies employ analysts, so they're always on the move, you know, technologically wise, and also other ways. And um, that's how analysts work. You know, if they say uh, this iPhone's better for this business because X, Y, and Z, then obviously the 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 the, the, com the company owner is going to listen to that take into account what he said and act on it. So, you know, moving on from the BlackBerry, you know, to a, to an iPhone, yeah, that's fine. Do what you got to do. Because I remember the dispute in, uh, in Britain a while back where when, the, when Windows 7 was very first released, you know, big companies like the NHS, which is... Um, the you know the big giant hospitals and stuff that are run by NHS and stuff like that they were arguing whether to switch to Windows 7 because it was a new platform they switched from Windows XP because Windows XP was so stable and they failed on Vista so they were arguing whether to use Windows 7 so what they do is the, the analysts sit down use the software for a while see if it's good enough for what you know, what they want to use it for, and then they then they um, act on whether they should switch or not. But it's just getting the right analyst in to recommend what what's best for your company. Because at the end of the day, analysts can either win your money or lose your money. You know, because they could go out and splash the cash on the highest NPCs in the world, and they all start breaking down or they can go out, spend a reasonable amount of money on a system that's built solid, reliable, and doesn't take much, you know, um, maintenance and, and stuff like that. Because the less maintenance, the less money you have to fork out for the maintenance guy to come in and repair those systems. So, you know, it's just, it's just all about what companies are on the move about. You know, it's just they're always on the move. Well, I so, think now we're yeah. seeing uh, companies using multi-platform. I mean, yeah, they may use, like, mostly Windows computers, but they may have, you know, Linux servers, uh, Microsoft servers, or, uh, you know, not as much as perhaps Windows and vice versa, depending on, you know, what company or business it is. Um, I know a lot of uh, uh, people in film, they use Linux for rendering for their 3D movies or special effects. So they'll have Linux, yeah. uh, Linux render farms, uh, and you know things like that. So it's not necessarily stuck on one platform. Uh, often they'll use multi platforms, and the businessmen within that company may use 
combination of Blackberries or iPhones, whatever their preference may be. But obviously, they got to be able to connect everything together um, some way, sometimes. But yeah, well, you know, like I said before, companies are always on the move, and they're always on the move for a purpose to make more money. But at the same time, they can't lose that money because of the. So, hey, Bob, I've got a question for you, mate. This is an off topic. Now, listen, listen. If you get, if someone hands you an iPhone four, would say so you would. Oh, you know, not this again. <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if someone hand, hands you an iPhone 4, would you use it permanently? Well, actually, you did know. say the, uh, you did say Bob that if you know, or I don't know if it was yeah. with the iPhone. You said if somebody gave it to yeah. you, you know, possibly yeah. use it. Yeah, if someone gave it to me for free, yeah, I'd use it in a heartbeat. Hey, hey, just give me your your mailing address hey. and no, okay, no, I gotta keep it. No, no, seriously, hey, really, Bob, <laughs> if, if someone actually hands you an iPhone 4 for free and use that as your, as your permanent phone, would you would you change your view on on Apple on the Apple iPhone? I've used the Apple iPhone before. Yeah. So, what don't you like about it? I don't. What, what are you talking about? I don't like anything about it. I, I do like the phone. It's just, what's the point in using it when I won't use it to its full potential? Oh, yeah, I think he mentioned that before. That you know, yeah, like I said before, you know, the reason why I don't want to buy an iPad is because I'd use it for a week and then it'd sit in the drawer and collect dust. See, that's what I don't get about you, Bob. What do you see? You, yeah, you need because I get bored of things and I'm yeah, very that's, impatient. That's what I don't like about what you say about things. You know, you got to try try these things out. I do try a lot of things out, but still, people get bored of things. <laughs> well, I, I, I could see get bored now very easily. I could see like if a, a price point, if the iPhone phone four now, I think the prices come down on them. I think they're around two hundred dollars more or less. Some you can even get cheaper now. Uh, I could see if it was like five hundred, six hundred dollars for you know an iPhone that maybe the cost for the power that it has would be you know wouldn't be a good deal for you. But you know uh, if if yeah, now well, the price was I can't afford an iPhone four. I can get one, but I just don't think I'd be able to use it to its full potential. I reckon you would. I personally reckon you would. Well, let's say let's say if the the price came down where worth it was uh you know. A hundred dollars or sixty dollars. <laughs> a hundred dollars and go buy one now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just you know throwing it out there for you and see if. Uh... Yeah, yeah. But um, if 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 the iMac 27 inch high spec model was a hundred dollars, I would go out and buy one right now. <laughs> You'd buy like four of those be, things. I would as well. I 